Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to make a Gmail tutorial for beginners. I feel like a lot of people nowadays are maybe switching to Gmail, getting Gmail accounts, using Google Meet, things like that. And I personally love Gmail. I think it has a lot of really great features. But if you're not familiar with them or aren't used to them, I can understand how they could be confusing. So I wanted to go over some of them today. I will leave a list in the description box of the topics that I'll be covering today along with their timestamps. So let's get started. I obviously wanna start with the basics and talk about composing an email and everything that you can do with composing an email. So to start drafting an email, you're just gonna go up here to the plus sign or where it says compose, click on that and this box will pop up right here. And you can easily just start typing your email. But if you wanna make this little pop-up larger, you can do that by clicking this button right here, which is full screen. It doesn't make it totally full screen, but it does expand it if you are gonna be typing a longer email and wanna see it in a larger format. You can also set this as your default email draft method. So instead of the small pop-up window, you can set this as your default by going to more options and default to full screen. So now if you compose an email, it's gonna default to the larger box instead of the smaller pop-up. But if you do want to go back to the smaller pop-up, you just click this button again and it will go to the smaller pop-up window. Now I wanna talk about something called Smart Compose, which you may or may not have noticed happens while you're typing out emails in Gmail. So when you start typing a sentence, Google has this feature where it will kind of guess what you're trying to say. So let's say, good morning, I hope, and then it fills in the rest. This email finds you well. And if I do, if that's exactly what I wanted to say, I can just click tab and it will finish filling it in for me. If you like that feature, you can keep it, but there's also a way to turn it off if you do not like it, which I will show you how to do. So if you go up here to settings, you might have to minimize your window to see the settings. You will wanna click see all settings. So here are all the settings, and if you scroll down, you'll see Smart Compose, and it tells you a little bit about what Smart Compose is, and so you can turn the writing suggestions on or off. In this general settings section, you can also change the undo send settings, which can be really helpful. If you didn't know, once you send an email, there is a little bit of a delay where you can actually click undo send if you made a mistake or attached the wrong document. So in this undo send section right here, you can see that you can change the send cancellation period to all the way up to 30 seconds. If you do make any changes, make sure you scroll all the way to the bottom to click Save Changes. And now I'll show you what it looks like if you actually do accidentally send an email that you want to undo. So I'm just gonna add random recipient, say good morning, I hope, and let's just say you accidentally sent it without saying I hope this email finds you well. This box will pop up down here for 30 seconds if that's what you send it to. So for 30 seconds, you have the option to click undo. If you realize right as you sent it that you had a typo or sent the wrong attachment or something like that, if you click undo, it will just take you back to the email as a draft and you can fix whatever your typo was and send it again. You can also choose to schedule an email instead of sending it right at the time you draft it. And the way you do that is right next to send, there's this drop down, and you can click schedule send. These are just kind of standard times that they pick for you, but if you want to pick your own, you just click pick date and time, and you can change to the exact time that you want to send it, and then schedule send. And then to see the messages that you've scheduled, on the left hand side here, you can see scheduled. And then if something changes before it's scheduled to go out, you can of course click cancel send and then it'll just bring you back to the draft. You can make any changes that you need to before it gets sent out. Next up, I wanna talk about changing your default text style. So within your email, if you highlight, you can go down here to change font, size, all of that to maybe make typing or reading your emails easier but you can also change that as a default setting. So we're just gonna discard this draft for a second. Go to settings, see all settings again, 
And here is the default text style. So if you want to change it to be large or huge, you can do that and it will show you what it's going to look like if you wanted to change your default text to be red. You can also change the font and then Again, if that's what you wanted, you can just scroll down and click Save Changes. Another thing you may have noticed if you use Gmail for work or something like that, sometimes if somebody sends you an email with the same subject line as an email somebody else sent you, it will actually group those emails together. And sometimes that can be very unhelpful when you're trying to search for emails. So you can turn that setting off which is something that I like to do on my Gmail personally. So if you go to general settings, of course, and scroll down to conversation view, you can turn conversation view off. And that way emails with the same subject line won't be grouped together, which will make it easier for you to find and sort through your emails. If you wanna add a signature, you can just go to general settings again, scroll down, and there is a signature section right here. So you can click create new, You'll just have to name it something like default signature, maybe phone and email, whatever you wanna name it. And then to the right, right here, you can start with your email signature. So you can make it bold, you can make your name larger, you can underline italics, you can also insert a link maybe to your website if you want to do that. You can also add an image if you want to add a logo for your business. You can insert an image. And this is another important feature. So for signature defaults, for new emails use no signature or the default signature. And on reply and forward you can also change if you want no signature or the default. So we're going to click for new emails use default signature slash phone. We're gonna do it for replies and forwards as well. So then we're gonna click save changes. So that way when I go to compose a new email, my signature is just already in there and I can start typing above it. If you're going to be out of the office and not responding to emails, you can of course set an out of office or vacation reminder, which is in general settings. So if you scroll all the way to the bottom, that's where the vacation responder is. So. If you're gonna turn it on, obviously click on, and then you can do the first day. You can also select the last day, or you can manually cancel it, which I'll show you how to do. You just need to add a subject. I will be unavailable till Monday. Save changes. And now as you can see, this yellow bar is telling me that I have an out of office message on. So if I wanted to manually end it, maybe I was just out of office for the afternoon, I can click end now. And once that yellow bar goes away, that means that your out of office message is turned off. So the next thing I wanna talk about is email forwarding. So I pulled up an email here that I would like to forward along to somebody else. So the way I can do that is by scrolling down and clicking forward, or you can go to these three dots up here and click forward as well. So as you can see, it's forwarding the entire chain. And I have sent two emails in this chain, email number one, and email number two, but I only want to forward email number two. I don't want email number one to be in this thread. So what I can do is just highlight that and delete it. And now only email number two is coming up. You can also erase all of this right here at the top, you know, with the emails and everything, just delete that so it just says forwarded message at the top and then right underneath it is the forwarded message. You can also just delete the forwarded message and now the only thing that the person's gonna see that you're forwarding is email number two. Also, let's say that there was an attachment in the email that you don't need to send, you just need to send the body of the email. At the bottom here, any attachments will show up. So if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, you can just click this X button and it will remove any attachments and then you can send along this email with just the text in the body of the email. Finally, I wanna talk about some settings that can make it easier for you to find your old mail in your inbox, which is a complaint that my dad has. He thinks it's hard to find old messages in Gmail. So if you go to your settings again and scroll down, there's a couple inbox types that you can choose from. You can choose default, which is 
It just puts all of your emails in chronological order from when you received them, regardless if you've opened them or not. But another option is to do unread first, which I find to be very helpful because now all the messages that I have not read that I know I need to go through are at the top of my inbox and all the ones I have read are down here at the bottom. If you're looking for something specific, you can obviously just search your mail for either a person or a subject line or the content in an email and hopefully it will pop up. You can also check your trash. And the way you do that is on the left-hand side, if you click more and scroll down, you can click trash and anything that you maybe accidentally deleted might be in the trash. After 30 days, as you can see here, messages in the trash are automatically deleted. So this is really only like recently deleted emails, but this is also where you can check your spam. Sometimes you get messages from like health charts or things like that that might go to your spam folder. This is where you will look for your spam emails. That is it for today. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate the support. If you want me to make another video with some more advanced Gmail tips or just additional Gmail tips, let me know in the comments and I would be happy to do that. Thank you so much for watching today and I will see you in my next video. Bye.